Hey guys, Tony here. It's 1.21 in the morning on Thursday, August the 1st, as I'm making this video. And I'm guessing as you can tell by my tone of voice, my disposition, kind of my body language, and the damn title of the video, this is going to be a much more serious one. So, yesterday, July 31st, I quit my job at the media company that I worked for. Well, I guess I shouldn't say I quit my job. I should say that was the my last day on the job. I turned in my two weeks notice about two and a half weeks ago. So, yeah, yesterday was my last day on the job. It went as normally as any other day, and it was... Over like that. I'm not going to really go into the nit and gritty as to why I quit. Like into deep specifics. Because this video is not about bashing the company I once worked for. It's not about dragging their name in the dirt. It's nothing like that. I for one appreciated everything that they've done for me. The opportunities they gave me the wonderful people they introduced me to working for that company was a wonderful as well as hellish experience or I guess I could put it that it was one of the most wonderful and hellish experiences of my life I wouldn't trade it for the world it gave me a lot of experience working in media, experience that I could not buy, I would have to earn, and I think for certain that I earned it working there. I gained a lot of knowledge about the inner workings of how media works here on Guam, uh, the personalities at play, the business mindsets. It taught me more than I give it credit for at this day and at this time. But it definitely did, and I'm sure a lot of the things that I gained from working at this media company, I will be able to use in the near future, or might be vital, or might prove crucial for my life moving forward. So really, I have nothing but the utmost respect for the company. I truly appreciate everything they did for me, and I both enjoyed and loathe our one and a half year or I guess close to one and a half years probably more than that but one and a half year journey together thank you so much but why did I leave why did, why did I choose to leave the company well to put it simply there were a multitude of things one of which was I felt very disrespected in my position or I felt very mistreated or a combination of the of, of both uh, mistreatment and a sense of disrespect uh, my vision for what I needed to do did not fit the overall vision of the heads at play which will always clash and I lost one of my biggest allies to another company so for me, I was just reading, I was reading the, the tea leaves or I was feeling the wind. I felt the wind was changing, not, it was changing in a direction that wasn't favorable to me. And it was just time for a change. It was time for me to move on. Again, no ill will. I'm not going to call specific people out. That's not the point of this video. It's not the point of the video at all. It's mostly just to tell you guys that I did leave my job. I had my reasons. And to be honest, while I won't say that it was easy to leave my job, but it also didn't feel that difficult. But I cannot deny that there was this sense of fear that hit me when I walked into my boss's office and said that I was putting in my two weeks notice. There was a sense of dread, I'm not gonna lie. Because, you know, humans by nature, we fear the unknown. We fear uncertainty, we fear 
instability. This job gave me an opportunity, or I guess it provided me with stability, knowing that I had a place to go to every weekday to work, build my craft, do what I love, as well as earn money to help out my family and to support myself. But of course, that, that dread, that fear creeps in when you all of a sudden just say, no, I'm going to remove this sort of security blanket. I'm going to remove this sense of stability and take a leap into something else, whether it works out or not. And that's what I did. And I guess that's what I wanted to talk about the most in this video. It's not about the fact that I quit. Really, it's been done. There's nothing to change now. Really, what I wanted to emphasize is that if you feel like you're in a job that is mistreating you, mishandling you, not giving you the respect you think you deserve, not using you to your fullest not helping you grow in any way. Don't be afraid to seek out other opportunities. Opportunity is out there. You just have to look for it. But it also helps to have a game plan. Having a, a backup plan. Having a plan after the job that you have. It's good to have that as well. Have something set up so where... If this didn't work out, you can try something else. But don't be afraid to try something else. Don't be afraid of taking a risk. Don't be afraid of losing your security blanket. Don't be afraid of losing this stability. It'll be rocky. Maybe even tumultuous. But it always finds a way to even itself out. If you put the time, the effort, and the fortitude to do so. Because everybody fears losing their job. Everybody fears leaving their job. I've met people, not just in the company that I worked for, but also back in the States, who work these jobs mainly because they're afraid to try something new. They've, gone, they've gotten so comfortable in their place in the organization, in the place in the company, they fear the change. They fear any sort of change, whether it's internal or external. They fear trying to do something different. Because what if it doesn't work? This is already working, so why would I mess up a good thing? Or why would I mess up what's already clearly working for me? Well, sometimes even though it's working for you, it may not be the best thing for you. It may not help you reach your full potential. It's going to be comfy in the moment. It will seem nice in the moment. But down the line, if you stick by this without taking any chances, without really challenging yourself, you're going to look back and say, Wow, I wasted all that time working that damn job instead of really pursuing my passion, really pursuing what I want to do in my life. Because I was scared to take a chance. So again, to re-emphasize, if you feel like you are in a position, and this could be in a job or in a club or any organization that you're a part of, if you feel like you're being mistreated, mishandled, disrespected, and not used to your fullest in whatever business, company, organization that you're in, do not be afraid to leave that place. Don't be afraid to take a chance because you never know what could happen when you take a leap of faith. When you take a chance. When you believe in your own skills to move forward. You might even surprise yourself. I know I was surprised. I, I didn't think I would have the guts to leave this media company because... Working in media was a dream come true to me. That, that's where I was trying to go. Now, in hindsight, learning all the, or after all that I've been through, it wasn't the most ideal dream, but nonetheless, it was a dream that I strived for, I obtained, and I somewhat thrived in it. 
So I was glad for that. But to leave it was like, you know, am I crazy? Is this the right move? Is this the smart move? What if what if what I want to do next won't work out? All those doubts crept into my mind before I made the decision. But I was kind of set on what I wanted to do. And I had a backup plan. I had something in the works that I could have done outside of doing medium. So it put me at ease more to know that I had this other plan. That I knew that there was something else that I could offer the world. Which made the decision a little easier for me. So, yeah. Sorry if that was <laughs> a rambling mess. It's pretty late. But that's really what I kind of wanted to mention. Just, you know, if you ever find yourself in a position like me where you feel as though you're not propelling or you're not climbing up the ladder, progressing in your position, you feel empty about it, even though you're comfortable in where you are now, take a chance. You never know what could happen. With that said now, what is the next step for me? What do I plan to do next? What is your game plan, Tony? What is plan B? This is something I don't know if I spoke a lot about on my channel. I know I've spoken to many people I'm close with about it. I've probably spoken to some of my YouTube friends about it. But there was another passion that I had that I re just recently discovered about two to three years ago. And that passion is teaching. I know, shocking, right? <laughs> Call me the Black Real School. <laughs> Shout out to those people who got that reference. What, how, how this came about, this, this passion to teach. I was teaching a co-worker of mine back in the States how to drive. And while I was having a heart attack every freaking time she stepped on the gas because she was driving my car with no license. And I'm like, yeah, just don't hit anything, please. Don't damage my car. She... Never made a dent, not once, because she followed my directions soundly, and she ate, she, she learned how to drive. I think the most heart uh, pounding, I should say, yeah, the most heart pounding moment was when I asked her to drive from our work to my house. Now, my house is about maybe a, a mile and a half to two miles away from my work, so... I was like scared as hell. I was hoping she did not get into an accident. But she did wonderfully. She did wonderfully driving to my house from our work. And the beauty of it all, from my teaching, she aced the driving test. While I was teaching her how to drive, Maybe she just meant it in jest, or maybe she actually believed it, but she would constantly tell me, you know, Tony, you would make a great teacher. You would make a great teacher. You know, I felt like, I felt so comfortable behind the wheel because you were guiding me and you gave me the right advice. You told me the right things. You know, you were being a good teacher. I think you would be a great teacher. I reflected on that for a long time, like a year and a half. Saying, huh, maybe there is more that I can offer the world than just doing these YouTube videos. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I love making my YouTube videos. In fact, the beauty about not working at my media company, more time to make some YouTube videos. So I thought about it and I said, why don't I give teaching a try? Why don't I actually try teaching out? I think it's a very noble thing to educate the next generation because you want to make sure that the people that come after us, when we're old and gray and there's new leaders running the world, that they're educated enough to run the world properly. 
And so I think it's a beautiful thing to be a teacher. We don't give enough shout outs to teachers, enough respect to teachers. You know, they have a very hard, somewhat unforgiving, thankless job. How many times have you ever thanked a teacher for teaching your students? Or to teaching your students? How many times have you ever thanked a teacher for teaching your son or daughter or nephew or niece or someone you were related to? When did you ever thank the teacher? I can't think of a moment. I mean, if I had the chance to now, if I could meet them again, all of my teachers, I would thank each and every one of them. Every single one of them. Even the ones I hated. Because, again, their job was, was really hard. Dealing, they had to deal with close to 200 kids per day. Per day. Not just one kid one day or one kid one week. Per day. Day in, day out. For almost damn near eight months. They're basically your parents away from your parents. So... You know, we don't give them enough credit. I applaud them. You know, there are some teachers that really love their jobs. There's others that have become jaded because of their job. But either way, I admire what they do. And I wouldn't mind joining their ranks. I would love to educate kids. Help them grow into either model s citizens, model students. Make sure that they have the knowledge to move forward and progress in life. What would I teach? I love history. I think I've mentioned that multiple times on this channel. If not, hey guys, guess what? I love history. And history is just so fascinating. There's so many facets of history that just blow my mind to this day. And how some events in the past are as relevant now as they were back then how some things correlate with the times that we live in it's a beautiful yet maddening thing at the same time that you know there's this sort of poetry to history but at the same time how did we not learn from our mistakes after all these years so i want to teach history and i have already taken the steps to do so i have a test that I'm going to take this Saturday. It's called a practice, practice, praxis one test. I take it this Saturday. I am studying for it as we speak. I'm hoping I do well because I have not been good at math. That one of the things I have to do is I have to be good at math. I have to be proficient in math. Not like to a high degree because I'm teaching a, a subject specific class like history. If I was doing elementary i would need to be good at math so but yeah i got to take this practice practice this one test and based on how well i do on that all i gotta do from there is turn in my transcripts from ucf fill out an application to become a teacher submit it wait to hear back and then we go from there now guam is desperately in need of teachers so I felt more of an urge to follow the call because there is such a desperate need for us. This island needs educators. And I'm willing to be one of them. No matter where, you know, I'll do my best. I hope kids gain some sort of knowledge from me when they leave my class every day. But I'm excited with the idea of being a teacher. Now I don't have this fantasy-like idea of what being a teacher is like, like from the movies and things like that. I know that is not the reality of what being a teacher is. And make no mistake, a lot of my friends here on Guam are teachers. And they made it clear to me that Tony, teaching is not as wonderful as it's cracked up to be some days you're gonna love it other days you're gonna really hate these little bastards that's what a lot of them tell me and i don't i don't disagree i think they make valid points because kids can get on your damn nerves 
especially when they're not listening to you or they're not engaging in the class like they should be, especially nowadays when you've got kids on their phones. You've got to find a way to get their attention. So, yeah. I'm up for the challenge, though. In fact, the challenge excites me. It excites me more than working at that media company at this current state excites me. So, yeah, I can't wait. Hopefully, I pass my test. So, keep me in your thoughts, guys, when I take the test on Saturday. Uh, I hope it's just not a pain in the ass. And hopefully, I can become a history teacher at a middle school, which is my goal. I want to be a history teacher in middle school. Middle school is one of the hardest, I want to say, what's well, not sections, but it's one of the hardest times to teach kids because they're in that threshold where they're not really kids anymore but they're not teens yet it's a very trying time for these individuals and i think that's why it'd be opportune to teach them because they're going through such hard times they need that type of support so yeah i'm excited but that's not the only thing i'm going to be working on guys Teaching's not the only thing that I'm thriving for while or after leaving my job. Leaving my job has provided me with so many new opportunities that excite me. Not only the teaching thing, but I'm working with this convention production team called Kai Productions. They are, guys, without question, some of the most wonderful people I have ever met. Their team is amazing we all just click with each other no one has an ego and we all are goal centric we want to put together the best damn anime convention you've ever been to and i think we've been succeeding thus far we've done two this year well one was mainly ours and two we collaborated with the ganya shopping center it's a mall here on guam and you know, we, we basically did the heavy lifting there, and we did a smashing job, and now we got another one coming in November, and now that I'm away from that media company, I can, devo I can devote more time to helping the team create a fantastic event. Being away from the media company also opens up my time to, or let me reword that. Being away from the media company gives me an opportunity to go back to something I've missed for so many months, years, something I used to dedicate my life to, something that I used to make on a regular basis, and you all know what I'm referring to, making YouTube videos. I've been so on and off when it comes to making YouTube videos, I don't know how I still have 88,000 subscribers. Well, I'm losing subscribers on a daily basis now which what are you gonna do you know it's just the nature of youtube now anywho being away from the media company allows me the chance to go back to making youtube videos again on a much more frequent basis now i am going to be a teacher so that might get in the way but now I'm no longer eating where I'm pooping. What do I mean by that phrase? Working for a media company and then come home and also work on YouTube videos. Could you imagine how demanding that is? Because I'm editing at work and then I come home and instead of relaxing, I'm editing here. So the beauty of my old job when I worked at the bowling alley is I did not edit at the bowling alley. I did another more strenuous job. And then when I came home, I would watch anime. I would watch a movie. I would write a review. And then I would record it. Now that I no longer have to deal with production for this media company, I can focus solely on my own productions. Getting back to my anime reviews. My movie reviews. My why I won't watch this, my cringe theaters, my top 10 list, or I guess maybe just tier list now. All the special videos I've been doing lately, Into the Void, which has been very successful. Thank you guys for watching that. I truly, truly appreciate it. I miss YouTube. YouTube, I may never become the biggest YouTuber. 
I may not be famous through YouTube. Hell, my contemporaries are passing me as we speak now. But I've accepted that. And really now, I just want to do me. I want to do me on YouTube. And whether I succeed or I fail, at least I can say I did it doing what I do best. Being myself. And then I can interact with you guys more on the Discord, which is amazing. That'd be great. I would love that. Not only that, but I'm also starting a small production company. I'm working with some close friends. And we're going to be working on some special videos. That's got me excited as well. So yeah, although I am leaving the security of a day job, even though I'm leaving this media job that I was having fun with for a small period of time, I am so ecstatic for what's to come. I am so excited for what's next in my life. You know, as somber as I may sound, I'm, I'm jonesing. I'm jonesing to get started in my new direction. I hope it all works out. And if it doesn't, I still have you guys. That's not such a bad thing either. I know many of you are probably wondering if, because now that I don't have a job, will I bring my Patreon back? I've given it some thought. I don't really want to bring it back because again i it's just me but i don't like asking people for money like you know and i know i had an argument with one of the um moderators on my discord and he's like it's not asking for money tony we're we're we want to give it to you but i'm like it was still i created it it's it's a tricky thing so here's what i'll do in the sense of this whole Patreon thing. Because I know it's going to be brought up again. I know you're watching this. I know you're watching this, Anime Hulk. I will have a discussion on my Discord. And I will ask you guys. Should I start a Patreon once again? Based on what you all tell me. In there, we will do a vote. Yays and nays. And then we go from there. Okay, I don't know how long this video is. It's probably near, damn near 30 minutes long because I talk and I ramble and stuff. But just to wrap it all up, I quit my job. I had my reasons. I was scared to do it, but I took the leap of faith. I took the risk of getting out of my security blanket because it was worth it. And if you ever feel like you're dejected at your job, you're mistreated, you don't feel like you're thriving the way you were hoping, don't be afraid to take that chance too. Don't be afraid to leave that job. Don't be afraid to leave that security. Don't be afraid to leave or don't be afraid to be uncomfortable once again. That sense of uncertainty. Don't fear it. Embrace it. I'm excited to take this new path of becoming a teacher. I hope I make it. I have so much I want to offer to the children here in Guam. You know, hopefully they accept me. Hopefully, they'll also accept me knowing that I made this YouTube channel. They're probably like, hey, aren't you the guy that was ranting about incest anime? Isn't that, uh, I don't know if we should make you teach kids. I'm like, whoa, now wait a minute. They were educational. But you were cussing in them. Like, like I said, they were, they were educational. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited with the prospect of becoming a teacher. I'm excited to get back to making YouTube videos. I'm excited to work with the with Kai Productions to get started on Pacha, Produ Pacha Productions, which is the production team I'm starting with a group of friends. I'm so excited for what's to come next. I don't know if it's all going to work out, but that's the beauty of it. I, I don't need to know whether or not it works out. I just need to be ready for it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry it was long. Maybe even rambling, but hopefully you guys got something out of it. And I'll see you guys soon. I, I hope to get back to making some videos. I got the time now, right? I got the time now. I don't really have much of an excuse. Outside of the test I got to take this Saturday. So, uh, Other than that, though, I got the time now. So I got no excuse.
I should get cracking, shouldn't I? Thank you guys for watching. And as always, peace, YouTube.